two long-term strategies. Two long-term strategies. What are they? Play on the issue of desires and play on the issue of innovations. Bid'ah. These are the two long-term strategies of shaitan. If he, if he gets you in one of them, he'll be happy. This is why uh, one of the tabi'een said, إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لَيَشُمُّ قَلْبَ الْعَبْدِ Shaitan comes to a person and he sniffs. He, 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 he tries to smell your heart, sense out your heart. فَإِذَا وَجَدَ قُوَّةً دَفَعَهُ إِلَى بِدْعَةً so if he finds strength, love for Allah, dedication, worship, the person wants to worship, he tries to push him more. Imagine, he pushes him more in worship, not to help him worship Allah, but to get him off to fall into bid'ah, into innovation. This is why we have to be careful. And we will come to talk about our counter strategy, how to deal with that. On the other side, if he senses the heart and he finds there is weakness, there is love for the dunya, Love for the desires, love for wealth, love for, uh, for women, love, for, uh, yeah, love for, for anything, that, for any sin. What does he do? He increases the person in that. These are the long-term strategies of shaitan. So we have to be careful of this. Okay? What is shaitan created of? Created of fire. Okay, who are the children of shaitan? Jinn. Adam is the father of human beings. Satan, shaitan, is the father of all jinn. Now the believer jinns, there are believers and non-believers or disbelievers. The believers are just like the believers among human beings. The disbelievers, the worst among them, these are shayateen, the devils. These are the devils. So shaitan is their father. I'm just trying to give some kind of background on, shait on shaitan. So what's the lifespan of shaitan? Satan himself. How long does he live for? So the day of judgment. That's his lifespan. So we have 60, 70 years. He has thousands of years of experience. He's been you know, fooling people, tricking people, duping people, misleading people for thousands of years. So he has uh, you know, a great storage of experience and understanding of human psychology but we have so there's something we have to understand now if we are to counter our enemy what do we do what's the first thing you do if you were to be the commander of like a country or an army and you have a great enemy that or strong enemy what are what is the first thing that you do study, study. study your enemy you study your enemy just get to know your and who you're dealing with if you start with any point other than this, you will lose your way. So you have to understand who you're dealing with because this is where all your plans will fall off from. Okay? Let's understand shaitan. How strong shaitan is? How is he? How strong is he? Does anyone know? He's weak. What's your proof? Huh? So shaitan has no power. Unless you empower shaitan, he has no chances of winning. Believe me. Shaitan doesn't have power over us, but we give him that power. We give him the ground. If you give him the ground, he wins. If you don't give him the ground, he's weak. He has no power over you. You see? So shaitan cannot ca you know, catch you from the eye until you come on, drink alcohol. You drink, or he puts a gun to your head, drink alcohol, commit zina. Shaitan doesn't do that. He doesn't have that power. So you have power over shaitan. Unless you empower him, remember that, he, he, he stands no chance. So if shaitan is weak, what are his weapons? Now this will take me back to the worship of Allah. I will, I will keep going, you know, back and forth, jumping from one issue to the other. Because I do that intention, intentionally. I'm trying to break some of the boundaries. So... We're trying to link things together. How do human beings behave? What is the essence of human behavior? Two things. Wallahi, if we study the Quran and the Sunnah well, we won't need most of the psychology we have today.
Because do you know what they do? Psychologists, they, 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 they do experiments. They do the observation, experimentation, and they come up with results. Some of them, they depend, depend on philosophy. So they start with observation, and they start to have some kind of philosophical theories trying to explain human behavior. These are the sources, experimentation. Yes? Where is the source? What is the source of our psychology? The one who created us, who made us, he can tell you the deepest secrets of yourself. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us enough in the Quran and the Sunnah. Just imagine, you, you buy a car Toyota. Now who understands the car more, your local mechanic or the manufacturer? The manufacturer, they understand things. You know your mobile phones? It has some secrets that I'm sure none of us know about. Now I knew some, but I, I just forgot them because I'm not a fan of mobile phones. There are secrets in your mo there are certain numbers that you can call international numbers. There are certain things that you can do that you can track your phone wherever it goes, if it's been stolen or something. You have certain services that you can do in times of emergency. You can get yourself out of, out of trouble. You, we, all, we already have these uh, services in our phones, but we don't realize. Who knows best about these, or most about these among human beings? The manufacturer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's the one who created us. So if we explore the Quran and the Sunnah, trying to understand how we behave, why we do the things we do, you will find secrets, that you know, breathtaking secrets that can change our lives. The books of two, specifically two scholars, are a clear testimony to this. Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim. Wallahi, when you read the words, I'm sure if somebody can put their words in today's vocabulary, today's con uh, you know, concepts, Wallahi, the whole world will be startled at this new discovery. Now, Ibn Al-Qayyim says human beings have two powers. This is the summary of human behavior. Two powers. Quwwatul ilmi wal irada. Quwwatul ilm. Quwwatul ilmi wal fahm. Wa quwwatul amali wal irada. In another place, in one of his books, he says, Al quwwatul ilmiyatul nazariya. And al quwwatul al iradiyatul amaliya. This is a summary of human behavior. This is the summary of your life. You understand this concept? You understand why you do the things you do. It's very simple. You can understand why other people do the things they do. You'll start to see through their actions. Humans have two powers. The power of comprehension and understanding and the power of motivation and action. These are the things we do. Now what happens to human beings? Let me just give you an example. A young man is walking in the street and he sees this half-naked woman. His eye captures the image. This image is information, it's knowledge. It goes straight, first it goes to your brain. If you don't think about it, if you just see a woman like this, and it, you don't pay attention, okay, it's gone. You just lose the whole thought. It remains in your brain, or goes through whatever it is, and goes out. It doesn't, it becomes static, stagnant. But, there is certain information or knowledge that if you capture, it goes to your brain. If it sinks to your heart, it is set in motion. It becomes functional. You have to do something. It brings about action. And this is what Ibn Qayyim was talking about. So this guy sees this woman. She, caps, she captures his attention. The image goes to his brain, sinks to his heart. What does he develop? Desire passion, inclination to that woman. And if he lets this grow, if he provides it with more attention, more thought, and he starts to think about it, regenerate it, this information is amplified in the heart. Now knowledge has, it gives rise to what? Passion. Love. Your heart will definitely uh, you know, will generate desire or motivation. So the first, mo at, the, at the beginnings, as, as, as soon as your heart captures this image, 
you'll start to develop this desire.